We're in the book of Joshua. We are on chapter 18 and we are on verse 9. That is what you gentlemen are telling me. So, if that's the case, that must be true. So the men went and they crossed over the land. This is the, the, uh, the people, they're not spies, they're the ones who, the three uh, people from each tribe, from each of the seven tribes that I have yet to inherit. So they cross over the land, and they wrote it, which is, uh, they're translating, I think it's described, right? They're describing it to the cities, for each city, for the seven portions uh, on, uh, in, in a book. Vayavo'u el Yeshua. I think we actually did this one. Vayavo'u el Yeshua. And they came to Joshua, el Machane Shiloh, to the camp in Shiloh. Or to Camp Shiloh, literally. <laughs> it's interesting in itself that it doesn't say el Machane bit Shiloh. Okay. Uh-huh. In other words, you have to add in at el Machane Shiloh. So it would mean literally to the camp Shiloh. Oh, oh. It doesn't mean to the camp at Shiloh. It doesn't mean, that's why. To the camp, yeah. Shiloh. It says to the camp Shiloh. Oh, is that what it says in English? No, that's not it. Was right. To the encampment at Shiloh. Right. So it's, uh, it should say bis Shiloh. So, okay, fine. Any comments on why so, they, what's, they so what's the significance of the... I'm just, I'm just noting it. <laughs> I'm not saying this is significance. Right. Mm-hmm. That's just a no, just uh, that is just a note on my part. Mm-hmm. In grammar, that's that called be. a double direct object. Oh. Double, double direct double. object. Ah. So that's so I see so you wouldn't, you would not need the at, the at as a result. Okay. There you go. Okay, so double Are direct object. I'm going to the city, namely Chicago. You know, understood Chicago. So, so you see, I'm going to the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. But you, you're right. saying it twice. The city and Chicago are the same. So they call that a double direct object. Uh huh. Or a double a, object. I'm going to the camp. It's the object Shiloh. of a preposition. So uh, it's not a preposition. Right? Huh. I'm going to the okay. camp at Shiloh. Uh, huh? Shiloh. I'm going to the camp. That's the name of the camp, or that's the name of the territory? The like territory's name, the camp is a camp, and the Shiloh is the name of the territory. The, well, the, the town. The I, town. I would say, wouldn't it be at, then? I'm going to the camp, camp ideal. I'm going to yeah. the camp I, I, at They're just the making it sound nicer in English. Correct. <laughs> it's Correct. Kind of, you know, I mean, It'd be like an understood but shame. It is. It, is, it is understood. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. It's understood. Because we didn't have the camp named Shiloh. We had a camp that was in Shiloh. That was in Shiloh. Oh. But that is just interesting that they wouldn't have to say Bishilo. Oh, Shiloh was, was, okay, so that was like. Shiloh would be like South Bend. Territory or region? Like South Bend. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to Midwest Torah Center. South Bend. South Bend. Ah. Midwest Torah Center, South Bend. Wait, wait. Ah, wait, wait. Yep. I'm to wait. I'm willing to wait. El Machane Shiloh. Right. Is, is, there, is there a comma there? That no, it's a period. Oh, in uh, yeah, there is. El uh-huh. Machane would be the end of that, and then Shiloh would be a different. No, no that's the, no, that's that's uh, that's the answer there. It'd be like we're I'm going to the city, comma Chicago. Or like yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> To the Shul Midwest Torah Center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The so double direct object. Yeah, if it's a double direct Those are genius. Yeah, you the Midwest Torah Center. Yes. <laughs> so this, this I find everything here. The sentence would be <laughs> complete if you said I'm going to the camp or I'm going to Shiloh. But you're, you're going to the camp Shiloh. Yeah, I'm going to the camp at Shiloh. Yeah. Good. So you wouldn't know if there's more than one camp in Shiloh, you wouldn't know which one. Well, there wouldn't be. It says the camp. And there is a vice say. It says 
Not a camp. Right. Not when I, by the way, it's in great. South Bend, yeah. in South Bend, if I say I'm going to the shul, there's only one shul. That's the HOC. Okay. If I say I'm going to the temple, there's only one temple, and that would be Beth L. If I say so I'm going to, I don't know, I, actually, I, wouldn't know, I don't know what they call Sinai. I'm going to Sinai. I guess you would say I'm going to Sinai. I don't know if they would call it, I don't think they call Sinai shul. Right, so I'm saying, once you say the, is specific, I'm going to the camp. Where's the camp? In Shiloh. Okay, cool. okay so that's another thing you can understand that as also. <laughs> Fine. But there's no, after we spent 10 minutes on this, there's real no significance <laughs> either way. I mean, I, I would say, way, the English is another word. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. The, what the things, what the people I have on my page, there doesn't seem to be anybody commenting on that, which only means one thing. Right. No, it really is. It only means one thing, right. that there's a problem in the text. Ah. As far as if you would look to why there's no uh, at Shiloh or why the grammar didn't work, if you would go to other commentaries who deal with those things, which I'm not, uh -huh. then they could write a whole uh, thesis on it. Ah. So it all depends on where you're looking, right? I'm just looking on the basic text and saying okay what are the problems in the text so nobody everybody's agreeing that there's no problem in the translation of the text maybe for your reason that they're using uh, from the uh, the notes or music the cantillation which is saying that it's a comma anyway in uh, to the camp where shiloh the camp was in shiloh fine could be as simple as that okay so uh next one you by the way, sometimes, Jim, the question is better than the answer to. I'm just thinking along those lines. Maybe the commentary would be, note, there's a difference that makes no difference. So there are such times when there's a difference that, don't, that doesn't make any difference. In shot, so in the simple, the commentary. on the simple level, it uh, makes no difference. Yeah. On, the, on the more, uh, on the drashic level, it could make a big difference. It could. But could. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not sure. I'm just saying sometimes the questions that we ask, even if there are no ready-made answers, does the, doesn't negate the question. The question is a really good question. The, uh, and it may be uh, that I don't, uh, we don't understand the grammar enough, and that's what we're missing. It could be based upon the cantillation. And by the way, that would be very important, because if the cantillation, if I would have read it, Hamachana Shilo, I would have thought you called it, just like you call a camp ideal, I would have thought you called the camp Shiloh. Yeah. So that would be a big difference. It's not yeah. camp Shiloh, it's the camp, camp at, at Shiloh. Sh at Shiloh. But you understand? The Hebrew doesn't say the at, the at. Yeah. No, 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 you don't, know, you don't know what I'm saying. If you look in your text, under the word machane, under the nun, okay, so you have a cantillation, a note of cantillation, there, right, right after the sago. Okay. Under the nun, oh, under the nun not, uh, not the vowel, the little, it looks like the, uh, the, curve, like the yeah, curve. Almost like the nail. Yeah. Right. That curve yeah. is a cantillation. It's a tipcha. That tipcha is telling you, stop the thought. Stop it. Don't go further. Okay. That's like the comma. So if it says, if I didn't have that comma, yeah. if I didn't know that comma was there, yeah. then I would have said, Hamach and Eshilo, yeah. the camp known as Shilo. Like Bill wants to say the shul known as MTC or whatever the, the city known as Chicago. But once it, that, can, that cantillation is there, that cantillation is telling me it's the camp, period. And now I have next word, Shiloh. So that's when the, that's when the commentator, has to, the translator, has to figure, what does that mean? The camp Shiloh, what, what is that? It's not the camp Shiloh, it, so it must be the camp at Shiloh. You understand? From the grammar of the sentence. Now my question is, why then is the end of a sentence at the camp? That's it. Well, you couldn't stop there. You couldn't stop there. You couldn't stop there at the camp. And then just the one word Shiloh, what's the point of having that? Right, so now I have to identify where Shiloh is. Now that becomes important. Why are they going to Shiloh? Why do they just go to the camp? What do I care where the camp is? So you understand what I'm saying? On a simple level, I could say there's no problem in the text. Leave me alone. It's a very clear text. And that's it. It's at Shiloh and no problems. But now I have to figure out, wait, why are they telling me 
that they returned to, after they described the land, that they returned to the camp at Shiloh. Why don't you say, I returned to Joshua, I returned to Joshua at the camp, or I returned to Joshua at Shiloh. Why do you tell me I returned to the camp at Shiloh? Huh. That would be another question, but that's not a shock question. That's not a, that's not a question on on uh, the straight text. That's a question of why. Why is the author telling me the story? The people on this page, again, are not interested in that sort of a question. Yeah. See, you understand what I'm saying? So you can ask a lot of questions, yeah. but at the level we're working on, you're not going to get the, nobody's going to be answering that sort of question. That you have to go to, the, to other commentaries and they'll get into the whole uh, thing of what's going on. We even actually answered why they're at Shiloh. I said this before. I forget where I saw it. But they want to say that Shiloh is now becoming the, the place for everything to happen because that's where they crowned... Uh, no, that's where the that's where the Mishkan would be set up. So I forget where I saw that though. Okay. If they didn't have the word Shino in there, would you know which camp they were talking about? Yes, because it says the camp. Uh, it says the I camp. Mean, you know, there's only one camp. There's only one camp. There's only one camp. Oh, okay. So Shino is, is, as far as we know, there, we don't know any reason for that word to be in there. Huh. Again, that's what that's my point. But yeah. so now we're learning that the Mishkan was set up at Shiloh and not other places. So the camp, the Mishkan would only be set up in Shiloh from that point on. But not from this sentence, you would know which camp you're talking about without that word Shiloh in there. We would know which camp because yeah. the, the only reason we would is because it says Ha Machane, the camp. Whenever it's a direct the, we always know what it's talking about. Sorry? I still, then, maybe I'm confused still. I don't know why the word Shiloh is in there when you say, ha, machana, machana, you know which camp you're talking about. I don't know why they have to put the word Shiloh in there. Oh, so that's a different question. Mm -hmm. That's my question. That, that's a, uh, I have no problem with that question, but that, would, again, that's not going to be answered here because it probably will be answered in the text later on. So that's another thing. Sometimes the questions are answered. If you just give it more psukha, it can be answered. Yep. I think your comment points back to verse 1. Verse 18, 1. And the entire community of the children of Israel assembled at Shiloh and erected the okay. sanctuary. There you go. Right. So, can we, so again, now you have another question based upon that. If we know this in chapter 18, verse 1, and the reason again, uh, and so we went through the whole thing. So the why do I have to hear again in chapter, in the same chapter, just 10 verses later, nine verses later, yeah. that they went to the camp in Shiloh. So the question becomes stronger. Mm -hmm. Why do they have to repeat Okay, why do they have to repeat they it? They already know what they're talking about. Why right. do they have to have that? Right, so that, so that would go to the a further question. Again, not a question on the text. We have to understand that. It's not a question on the text. It's a question on the, the, the story, the writer of the story. Why do you keep reminding me that I'm in Shiloh? But that's not a question on the text, per se. So that's why they don't have to... This is the text that we're talking about. No, no, no. In other words, when Rashi or any of these commentaries will make a comment on the text normally... It's to say there's a word missing in the sentence. Now, without that word, you're not going to understand it. So they tell you what word, if you will, is missing. Right. So they can make it make sense. Right. If the word, if the sentence makes sense on its own, yeah. so then they don't have to speak. Right. And they leave it to you, the writer, uh, to you, the, the, uh, the reader, to go through the story. And when you have those questions... So they are counting on you going to somebody, some other source who answers the questions of why, wherefore, and so on and so forth. Actually, why and wherefore are the same. <laughs> but it's... Uh, why did you use that word, <laughs> Rabbi? Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> A comment on your... Why and wherefore. So, the, uh, but that, those, those are the times that you have to go to the other commentaries, which we are not really looking at. But by the way, if you wanted to, you could go to 
It seems the Radak is speaking about it. Rabbi David Kimshi, it seems he's speaking about it on on uh, in the first uh, at eighteen one. But again, I don't want to get caught up with this. So okay. Very quickly, I'll just go through the commentary digest. It says that uh, Shiloh is referred to as the house of the Lord and also as the tent uh, and the tent of Joseph. How, hence, our rabbis deduced that it was a combination of a house and a tent. The direction of Shiloh took place 14 years after the Israelites entered the land. Previously, the tabernacle was in Gilgal. It stood, there, it stood in Shiloh for 369 years until its destruction during the days of Samuel. And so then you get into a whole thing of the halakhic status of Shiloh is similar to Jerusalem in that no private altars were allowed in its existence. Okay, so it, it, Shiloh has an importance, a, a tremendous importance, and then maybe that's why they're bringing it home even nine uh, verses later. Let's go on. So now Yehoshua casts the uh, lots in Shiloh, Lefnei Hashem, before Hashem. Vayechalek Sham Yehoshua and Arts and Joshua uh, split up or divided the land of the Bnei Yisrael for Bnei Yisrael Kemachlotam according to their divisions. Okay, so what's going on there is Mitzudas uh, David says what does it mean according to their divisions? Kefiyah Chalucha Mefereshet. According to the divisions that are explained in the verses before us. Okay, so, by the way, that's also something that we have to be reminded. So this verse 10 would answer the question of why Shiloh, by the way. Because Shiloh is a place of the, uh, the Mishkan. And that is where God's presence, as it were, is dwelling. So that's why he's going to cast lots there because that's where the, also the Kohen Gadol is going to be, and the Kohen Gadol is going to have to, they work in consonants. So they're casting lots, and is being announced from Hashem. For that, you need the Mishkan. So that's why they're going to do it, at, and that's why they're all encamped there, and that's why they have to emphasize. That's probably why they have to emphasize Shiloh at this point. V'ya'al goral mate bine v'nyamen. Mishkotam. So the Goral uh, went up for the uh, the uh, tribe of Ben Binyamin, according to their families, the Yitzik of Ugaralam, and also the border of their lot went up. Ben Ben Yehuda, Ben Ben Yosef, between Ben Yehuda, the children of Ben Yehuda, and between Yo and the children of Yosef. So now what happens is their border was on the north side from the Jordan and lost the place. And then it went up from the border to the side of the Jericho on the, the north, Mitzafon, Yama, and it went up to the side of the uh, the hillside, the hill westward. Or the mountain westward, Vahayuto Sotav Midbara, and is going outward to the wilderness of Beit Aven. Okay, fine. We're just getting, again, once again, we're back into geography of the land. Okay, everything else I need to. Okay. Vayavam Yisham, Agavul, so the border went over from there. Luza toward Luz. Uh, El Ketef Luza to the side of Luz, Negba on the south. Uh, he Beit El, which is Beit El. Ve'erad Akavul Atrod Adar, and so now the the hill that lies on the south side of Ve'erad Akavul Atrod Adar. Sorry, and the boy descended to Atrod Adar Al Ahar to on the hill. Ashimineg of the Beit Charon that lies in the south side of Beit Charon Tachton under it. So again, I would advise everybody just to pick up a map <laughs> because <laughs> then you'll see how the land was broken up. 
Vataar Hagavul Vanasav the Fadya Yamanegba. So the border was circled and encompassed the west side southward, Minahar, from the mountain or from the hill, however they want to decide uh, if you want to translate that. Asha Al Beit Kharod until uh, that was I'm sorry, that was that lies on the uh, before Beit Aron Negba on the south. Vayutor Satav and his goings out were El Kiryat Baal would go out to Kiryat Baal. He Kiryat Ya'arim, which is Kiryat Ya'arim. So ba Kiryat Baal is also Kiryat Ya'arim. Er Gbene Yehuda Zod Paatia, a city of the children of Yehuda. That is that was the west side. <laughs> But uh, if you, by the way, if you just go back, the Masudas Dov is asking a question. When we had on thirteen, it says Luza, uh, that is Beit El. This is going back uh, to the story of Yaakov. Masudas Dov explains Yaakov Kara Lu the Luz Beit El. Yaakov is the one who called this place Luz by the name of Beit El because of the dream uh, that he had. Uh, Kamo. Sha'amor of the Torah, like it says in uh, the Torah, below Ze who bait El Sha'am da Eitzel Ai, but this is not the bait El that's, that was near Ai, a Shahita Bechala Binyamin, that was in the portion of Binyamin. So apparently, we have two bait Ales in the, uh, going on here. We have one bait El which is in, the, uh, in this place, and the bait El which was in the Nachala, the inheritance of Binyamin. So just like you have main streets, main, whatever you call it, main, main, yeah, main street in every town, and you have, uh, actually one thing I was always interested in once, as I was passing on the highway, I would see Stoughton. I come from Stoughton, so in Mass. And yet there's another Stoughton around here where, where trucks are coming from constantly. And it would say Stoughton. I was always amazed by that. That places in the United States have the same names, mm -hmm. So you can come from the same town, or as my mother would say, we went to different schools together. You know, mm -hmm. you go to you, 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 <laughs> same town, but not together. But it's, uh, okay, so now we go further. So whenever you see these name changes, by the way, there's something behind the name change, for, uh, like that, from Luza to Beit El, the, there's a reason that it was changed, and certainly from Kiryat Baal to Kiryat Ya'arim, there probably also is a name change there. I forget why it was changed, but it probably had to do with the uh, the name of oh uh, yeah, probably the name of the idol, which they never want to leave it. Baal would be the idol, so they would change it to the city of forests. That's all. There's always a way to get rid of the those names. Okay, fifteen. Upaat negba mixa yikirat yarim. So now the south side was from the end of Kirit Ya'arim. And by the way, it doesn't say that was called Kirit Baal. It's only one time it's going to say Kirit Baal, which was changed to Kirit Ya'arim. Okay. The Yatsa Gavul Yama, and then the border went out to the sea. The Yatsa El Ma'ayan Me Neftoach, and the and went out to the spring of the waters of Neftoach. The Yara Gavul El Ha'ir Ha'har. And the border went down to the end of the mountain. Asher al Pene Ge Ben Hinom. That was, it lies in the, before the valley of the son of Hinom, otherwise known as Gehenim. Okay, the same thing. Oh. That's the valley of Ben Hinom. Again, that's where the children were sacrificed to the god, one of the gods, probably Mal. Mal was it Molech? Molech, probably Molech. They would hear the babies crying. That became the the uh, our version of hell. But there is when somebody who says they're going to Gehenna, they really can go to Gehenna. It's a place in Israel. So <laughs> there is Gay Hinom. It's the value of Hinom. So when you tell somebody to go to hell, you really tell them take a trip to Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's a geographical place. Asher be'emek Rafam Safona. That was in the valley of Rafam in the north. Ve'yarad gei hinom. So there you go. And it goes down to gei hinom. Uh, that's before there. El ketaf hayavusi nekba to the uh, the valley of the Yavusim. 
Uh, no, it goes down to the Yavusim on the to Jebusite, says that's how they translate. Oh. Jebusite, right? The Jebusite on the south, via rod Ain Rogel, and it descends to Ain Rogel. Vatar meets the form Vietza Ain Shemesh. So then it circles from the north and it goes, it went out to Ain Shemesh, Vietza El Galilot, and then it, it went out to Galilot, Ashenochach Maladumim, and it went. Uh, it went to the uh, out, which is over the ascent of Adumim, the Yarad, and then it went down, Evan, Gohan, Ben, Reuven, to, to Evan of Bohan, the son of Reuven. The Avar El Ketef, Muharava Safona. And it passed along the side over against the Arava northward, and it went down to the Viarad, Haravata, and it went down to the Arava, the Avar Gavul, and then the border passed along. El Ketef Beit Chagla to the side of Chagla north uh, south Safona northward Vahayuto Sutav Hagavul El Lashon Yamel Safona and it's the outgoings of the border at the Bay of the Salt Sea to the north El Kaseh Yarden Negba to the edge of the Jordan to the south Zegvul Negev this was the southern border Vahayarden Yigvulotol of Akedma this was inheritance uh, I'm sorry. And the Jordan borders were at its side. Zot Nachalab Benayu Binyamin, the Gvotet, Saviv, the Mishkotam. This what were these were, I guess. Uh, this was the inheritance of Bene Binyamin to their to its borders around and to their families. So now we just know what Binyamin's uh, borders were. All they have to do now is actually go out and get them. But uh, that would be their border. And the cities of the tribes of Binyamin, according to their families, Yericho, Ubeit Chagla, Ve'emekatzitz. So now we have name places. Beit Arava, Utsmarayim, Ubeit El, Ve'avim, Ve'para, Ve'afra, Ve'kfara, Amoni, Ve'afni, Ve'gav, Arim, Shtem, Esrei, Chatzreihem. So you have all together 12 cities and their uh, districts or their uh, villages. Fine. Then you have Givon, Varam Uva Ero, Vemispe, Vekfira, Vemotsa, Varekem, Vir Peel, Vitar Allah, Vetsela, Vahela, Vayavusi, Hirushalim. So then they had these places. Now Yavusi, which is Jerusalem, Givat Kiryat, Kiryat, uh, so then Givat and Kiryat. Z- uh, Arim Arba Shrey Vikashrey. So he had fourteen cities and their villages. So Nachla Bene Binyamin the Mishkotam. That this is the inheritance of Bene Binyamin for the uh, according to their families. So I'll ask you a question. Why did they have to identify Hayavusi Yerushalayim, the Jebusite which is Jerusalem? Ah. Oh, yeah? Why does that why do you have to say that? What would you suggest? Because of a change in ownership of the. There would be a change. The Jebusites to the, the Israelites? There would be a change, but not at this point, there's not a change. That's interesting. It's not called Yerushalayim yet. It's only called Yerushalayim with David. David buys it. Ah. Hmm. It's going to become Yerushalayim. Absolutely, it's going to become Yerushalayim. There's no question about that. What you're seeing here is, when you're looking at the book of Joshua, you have to remember Joshua didn't write the book. Ah. It was ah. written later on. How much later did we say it was written? Uh... I forget already. I forget. Ah. Who, I forget. Yeah, it, it's a Gemara in Baba Batra, yeah. which tells us who wrote which books. But ah. the point is that this book is being written later on. We Dude. knew the information, but yeah. by the time it's being written, the name places have already changed. But Joshua must have made his cliff notes, then, right? He wrote some notes, apparently. How do they know what to write about? They had to have a history somewhere. Yeah, no, that, that, that's that's true. They had something, but he he didn't formalize it. And he didn't do an autobiography. Uh, when we were in Israel last year, when we uh, went on the, the tour of uh, um, Dear David, um, it told us that, that, that which is below the Temple Mount, 
right like on the other side from the Western Wall. Okay. And they said they, they, they were some ancient Egyptian writings that they found. It seemed, I, I'm trying to remember the name was, uh, uh, what was it, Yeru or just, or, or something, you know, the short name that the Egyptians apparently referred to that site as. Right. And, and well, that would be in the Veda Kingdom. In the Davidic kingdom, so he's calling it Yerushalayim. Right. But right. originally, it was under the Jebusite control. So I mean, so it sounds like the Egyptians knew about that, and that's what. Yeah, you know, by, by the time David was there, it certainly yeah. I knew about it. Yeah. Uh, but David's the one who uh, bought it from the Jebusite. He bought it. It was yeah. an, it was a sale. It wasn't a yeah. matter of capturing. Okay. They, it was a person who owned the land. And so he got, according to uh, what I remember, he got money from all the different tribes to purchase that land because that land would be the international capital, uh, not the international, but the, the capital of, of Israel. Yeah. So no, but no tribe could own it. Ah. While it's in the tribe, while it's in the, the, uh, the portion of Binyamin, it's still not owned by Binyamin. It was ceded. It's sort of like Washington, for what I understand about Washington. Washington was a swampland that nobody wanted. <laughs> uh, the only reason I know this is when I was in Washington, I actually read the, uh, the placard so that they were putting up that, that's there. And for what I understood, though, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the swampland which everybody said, we'll use this because nobody else wants to acquire it anyway. And so it became by itself a district. It's not, it's not, uh, yeah. it's, it's really, a, it's not part of the state that it's it, part of. The state didn't say so they wanted. Right, it's, it's really part of Maryland, but I believe. But it's really not Maryland. Yeah. It's a separate thing. And every, as a result, everybody owns it. And that's why oh, it's you, such a mess. Yeah, if you look at the map, uh, DC is, is kind of a square shape turned up on one point like oh. a diamond. Right. And it, it cuts into Maryland and Virginia, is what it looks like, I believe, on the map. Right, so that was just, but that was ceded from the, uh, everybody else's land, yeah. from what yeah. I understood. Again, I, if I got it wrong, I apologize. But it's, <laughs> but that's basically what's happening going on in Yerushalayim. <laughs> when David's taking it over, he's not taking it over on, as Judah, tribe Judah. He's taking it over as the king of all of Israel. Yeah. So there, therefore, he, he gets money from all the different tribes. Pays off the, the Jebusite, I forget his first name, but it uh, pays him off. And who, he was willing. He was a willing character in the sale. It wasn't that he was unwilling, and that's why he makes it the capital. So it's interesting though that the writer here is telling us that the Yuvusi that we're talking about that would be Yerushalayim, and that is in the portion of Binyamin. Okay, we're on chapter nineteen right now. Okay, good. So plenty of time. So they had so, so again we're just looking at the places that they were. Huh. So that's why we're running through. That's how we got so far ahead of you the last time you were gone. Ah. When it comes to name places, I don't spend so much time. Okay. So the second law came off of Shimon the Mati Bnei Shimon the Shotam to the tribe of Bnei Shimon for their families. And this far that was their inheritance. Betoch Nachala Bnei Yehuda amongst the inheritance of Bnei Yehuda. Again, they are in. Remember, we have the Bnei Yehuda, Bnei Yosef, we have them, they're north and south. Now we're going, and we already have uh, Ephraim and Menashe. So now we're really carving out land to give to these uh, different people. That's why they're cutting into, the, they're using the other places' borders. Fine. So, Vahila Hem Nachlatam. And so it was... Uh, this was they had the, uh, they had in their inheritance Be'er Sheva v'Sheva u'Malada. They had the Be'er Sheva, Sheva and Malada v'Chatsa Shual u'Bala v'Etzam v'Et v'El Tolav u'Betuel v'Charma v'Tziklig u'Beit Amar Kavot v'Chatsa v'Susa u'Beit. We're on uh, we're already on six u'Beit the Vaot v'Sharuchen. All together, Arim, Shlosh, and so they have all together 13 cities and their villages. Then you have Ayin, Rimon, Vietev, Ashan, all together, Arim, Arba, Vichashrehem. They have four cities and their villages. And all the villages that are surrounding these cities, Ad, Ba'alad, Be'ir, Ramad, Negev, until 
Bala Pi'ir Rav Anegev, Zot Nachalat Matei Bnei Shimon, then Mishkotam. That would be the inheritance of <coughs> the children of Bnei Shimon, uh, of Shimon, uh, to their families. Mechev al Bnei Yehuda, from out of the lot of Bnei Yehuda, Nachalat Bnei Shimon was the inheritance of Bnei Shimon, Ki Haya Chelek Bnei Yehuda, Rav Mehem, because the children of Judah, the portion of children of Judah was too much for them. So as a result, Bnei Shimon would inherit in the midst of their uh, their territory, their inheritance. Their, their inheritance being Yehudas. So the Matudas David says, wait a second. No, Rashi says, Rav Mehem, what does that mean? Minha Roy Lehem. There was too much, it wasn't that was fitting for them. It wasn't a matter of population per se, but it was it wasn't fitting for them to have that much. So, it, it, some of it gets taken away. Okay. Uh, anybody else? So he says, "Oh, so the uh, who's this? The Radak? No, Rash. Who, I don't forget who R is. So the, in the commentary digest it says they conquered much of their land with the aid of the tribe of Shimon, as in Judges." Therefore, it was fitting that they received their lot within Judah. Uh, it also explains that this was because of Judah's curse, Jacob's curse, that I will divide Jacob and scatter them in Israel. I will divide them, excuse me, talking about Shimon and, and Levi, and uh, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Shimon was given his part within Judah's territory, while Levi was scattered in many cities throughout all of Israel. So you're seeing that the curse of their father is uh, actually uh, coming to, to fruition here. That Jehuda does, that Shimon is taking part, is given part of another somebody else's land. And that way they don't have full power. The Yal Goral Ashlishi, so the portion went out, a third portion, uh, the third lottery went out. And this was Levnesh Zavulun and Mishkotam to the tribe, uh, to the children of Zavulun, to their families. Vahi Gavul Nachlatam Ad Sarid. So there, portion, uh, their, the borders of their inheritance went until Sarid. Viala Gvulam, Vialam, and their border went up to the sea. Mar Allah, Ufaga, Vdavashat, again, these are all name places. Ufaga El Hanachal, and it reached to the river, Asha Alpne Yekan'am. That was before Yekan'am. And Yekan'am, does anybody say? No. Vishav is Sarid, and so it turned from Sarid, Kedma, eastward, Mizrach Hashem, to the rising of the sun, Al Gavul Kislo Tavor, and it went out and to the border of Kislo Tavor, Vyasa El Hadavrat, Vyala Yafia, and it went out to Davrat and went to Yafia. Umisham, and from there, Avra Kedma Mizrach, it passed over, passed along the east. Tegita, Chefer, Ita, Vekatsin. Vyatsan, it went out from Rimon Hatoara, Hatoar, Anea. Okay, and then circled to that, to Anea. Fine. Menasav, Oto, Gvu. So then the border about Mitzaf on Hanaton, it went, so, and the border about it on the north side of Hanaton, Vayuto Tzotav, and its outgoings were Ge Yiftach El. The valley of Yiftach El. <coughs> Excuse me. Vekatat v'nahalal v'shimron, and uh, those name places. V'yid Allah ubeit lachem. So altogether, Aram shtem es revechatrein. Altogether, he had twelve cities and their villages. Zot nachalat bnei zvulun. Let me go down. This was inheritance of bnei zvulun to their families. Ha'arim ha'ela v'chatrein. The cities and their villages. The Yisachar. For Yisachar, Yisachar Goral Avi, so they had the fourth uh, lottery. The Bnei Yisachar and Shkodeim to uh, for the children of Yisachar and their families. Vayikvulam and their borders were, their border was, excuse me, Yisrael Aksulot Veshunem Vechafarim Veshion Veanharat Veharabit Hakishon Veabets Veremet Veein Ganim Veein Dechada Ubeitz Ubeit Patzets Ufaga Gavul Vitavo. So then the border goes around. It, it met in Tavor, Vichacha 
Shechad Sima, it's his name, it's clear to all. We paint Shemesh, Vayu Totsot, Gevulam, Yarden. So then those those borders went out to uh, the border of the Jordan, Arim, Sheish, Es, Shev, Chashen. So all the other 16 cities and their villages. Zot, Nachalat, Matei, Bnei Yisachar. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Bnei Yisachar, of Yisachar, Shulam, Yisachar, and Shechotam. According to the families, he Arim, Chashrehem, their cities and their villages. The Yatsav, Hagorol, Chamishi. So now you have the fifth Goral, the fifth lottery. The Mate Bnei Asher, the Mishkotam, to the children of, to the tribe of the children of Asher and their families. By Higvulam, and their border was. Chal Kavet Chali Ve'etin Ve'ash Achshaf. V'yala Melech, V'am Dal V'umishal. U'paga V'char Mela Yama. And it went, it met in the Carmel to the west. V'shichol Livnat. And then she, uh, and then she'chol Livnat. V'shav Mizrach HaShemesh Beit Agon. So then it turned to told the sun rising to Beit Dagon. By the way, this is interesting because Dagon was the name of the one of the Philistines' gods. And the, the Beit Dagon will actually play a role here later on. So it's important to remember certain names here. But Beit Dagon was like their, uh, their the big fish. The uh, the big godfish. I don't know what the what the god would do, but this is going to be playing out in the book of Shmuel, because the tri the Philistine I think it was Shmuel, the uh, tr the ark is captured by the Philistines and Dagon is taken down by God. Oh. He he destroys the the uh, idol. <laughs> Upagav, and it's, it's a fascinating story, God willing, we will get to it uh, soon in our days. Bizvulum b'nei yiftach el tzafona b'et emek uniel. So all, again, they, uh, it met in, uh, they met in Zavulun, and in the valley of yiftach el, toward the north side of b'et emek, uniel, v'yatsa el kavul mismol, and it went out of ba uh, Kavul to, uh, to on the left. The Evron, Rochov, Chamon, the Kana. So then it went from Evron, Rochov, Chamon, uh, Adzion, Rabba, until the great, uh, to great Sidon, the Shava, Kavul, Harama, Harama, excuse me, and the, the border turned to Rama. We had Ir, Mivsatsor, and to the, the fortress city of the rock, the Shava, Kavul, Chosa, and it turned, it turned to the border, the border turned to Chosa. And the Akhwans they were over to the sea of from the lot of the Achziv. The Umak, the Uma, the Avek all the names those name places. Arim Esra Esram Chai Ushtayim Khajim. So altogether you had twenty two cities and uh, sorry, and their villages. This was the inheritance of the tribe of Bnei Asher, to their families, these cities and their villages. Let's see how far I have to go soon. I don't know if I'll finish it. That's the, give me a few minutes more, okay? Because I just want to run through these things. Levnei Naftali, Yatsa Goral, so to the children of Naftali, the girl went up, but uh, girl, she, she, by the way, again, I'm going to note something, not I'm going to get stuck on it, but just note that in uh, verse 32, it reverses what has been saying until now. If you go back, I'll point out what I'm saying right here. If you go back to, oh wait, I'll take that back. It's changed, it'll be, it changed a little bit before already. Uh, if you go back to 1910, then it was it would say the Ayal It would say that the the third Shlishi, the third Goral went for Benezvulan. Then suddenly it comes to uh Yisachar in 17. There it just it doesn't say Bnei Yisachar, it doesn't say Mate Yisachar. It says Li Yisachar Yatsaha Goral. Aravi, the fourth uh, lottery went out, and then it comes to 
the fifth one, and it goes back to normal. Now it comes to the sixth one, and it again changes. It says, to the ch- children of, it doesn't say Lamate, it doesn't say to the tribe of the children of Natali. Now it's just saying, Livnei Naftali, Yatsagar al Ashishi. The sixth one went out. Like I said, I'm not getting stuck on it, I'm just pointing out that there's changes in the text, and it could be that maybe he was getting tired now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But we have to figure out, and that would be a question. Again, they're not going to deal with this question on, on these mm-hmm. pages. But the question would be, why is the author going back and forth with that formation? Why not just be consistent all the way through? Okay? Just keep that in mind. Again, I'm not answering all the questions. Sometimes I just bring a question up just to get your mind going. Okay? Because you, the, these are the subtle things that when you're running through like I'm doing right now, you'll miss. Because in the English, it's always the same. But in the Hebrew, it's not. So, keep that in mind. So, the children of Naftali, to the children of, to the, children of uh, Naftali, to the families, this was their border. Uh, so again, you're going from Chelev to Elon, and his outgoings were at the Jordan. And the border turned westward to Azno Tavor, and went out from there to Chukok, and that's where it met in Zavulim, Minege, from the south. And on Asher, it met it from the west. So we're really hitting borders at this point. And from the, and Judah is hitting it on the, uh, the Jordan toward the sun rising. So we're really surrounded. Uh, who's being, who's this? Naphtali is really surrounded by his brethren. Not by the sea, he's really surrounded by everybody. Okay. Yara and Mivsar at Sidim, and the fortresses of Sidim, Tsir, Vachamat, Raka, Vikiner, the Admon, the Harama, the Chatsor, the Ker, the Kedesh, the Edre, the Ein Chatsor, the Your Own, Migdal El, Harem, Ubet Anat, Ubet Shamesh, Arim Tsha Esre, Chatsraim. So they had 19 cities and their villages. Zot Nachlab, Mente, Bene, Naphtali. So that was the inheritance of Naphtali, which got time for their families. They are Rim, Chatsraim, their cities, and their villages. The ma- By the way, the question you'd have to ask is, and this would also be interesting to go back into the each one, look on the map, and see what their land was like. What was the topogra- What would the topographical map look like? Who was the most fertile? Who was in the mountain area? Who was this? Who was that? Then, if you really want to have fun, <laughs> then you are back to the blessings of. Moshe and Yaakov and see how they played out. In other words, each one was praised in a certain way. So you'd have to, to see why they were, and they both spoke via prophecy. So what was their blessing and how did it play out in what the land apportionment would be? Okay, so that's also very interesting to go back. Like I said, it's a lot of work to, to do. You can really go very deep into this. And to figure out where the land was, because we know where the borders were. You know, basically, we know those little towns, but we know the basic borders. So, Lamate Bnei Dan, the Mishkotam, Yatsa Gavol Ashvi, and finally the last Goral we're doing. By Gavul and Achalatam, and this was the borders of their inheritance, Sara, the Eshtaol, the Eshtaol, the Ir Shamash, the Sha'alavin. Same sound very similar there. In Gavul Mul Yapo. So then the border went off. Dan Mehem on one side. Vialu Bene Dan Vihamu. So what happened was the border of the children of Don went out from them. Vialu Bene Don. So then Bene Don went up. Vialachem who im lesh and they fought with the Leshemites. Okay. Vialkuotah and they conquered it. Vialkuotah Otah the Vicharev and they destroyed it with the edge of the sword. Vialkuotah and they inherited it. Vialkuba and they dwelt in it. Vekru the Leshem Don and they called the new place Leshem Don. 
Kishem Don Avihem. Of the name of Don, their father. So this is, just so we should, Marsh is telling us, when did this happen? This happened, the Acher Zaman Beit Abimeit Atniel Ben Kanaz. This happened after the time of Atniel, the son of Kanaz, and the times of Peter Pasal Micha, the, uh, that Micha had an idol, and because uh, that's talked about in the Sefer Shoftim. Okay, so you have a lot of this is going into or touching on Shoftim. So next, when we learn Judges, you'll have to remember all these, you'll see a lot of these things come again to uh, to bear. So in Zot Nachalat Matei Bnei Dan Meshkotam. So this is the uh, um, uh, the inheritance of the tribes of Bnei Dan to their tribes, uh, to their family, sorry, Ha'arim Ha'ele Ha'vechashrehem, the cities, these cities and their Villages. So now what happens? They completed dividing inherit. Uh, they completed. Oh, this is interesting. Linchol. You guys should appreciate this. What does nachal uh, nachol nachal mean? Inheritance, right? Okay, so. They completed to inherit the land. That's what it says literally. They completed to inherit the land because it's an infinitive. Ah. So what happens here? Rashi says, "What is Linchol?" Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not, Rashi didn't say it. The Mitzudas David says, "What does Linchol mean?" Lahanchil to cause it to be inherited. Via the lottery. In other words, it says it doesn't make sense. It's a problem in the text here. This is the classical problem in the text because he complete. that's why I stopped. He says, They completed to inherit the land to, uh, to its borders. That doesn't make sense. What do you mean they completed to inherit? So, so as soon as David explains, it doesn't mean the classical thing of to inherit. It means they completed causing the people to inherit the land. Huh. Okay. So they gave to Bnei Israel the portions, uh, the Yeshua ben Nun uh, to inherit to Joshua the son of Nun among them. Al pi Hashem was not new lo at a era shishal, and according to the word of God, they gave him the city which he asked for at Timnat Serach Bahar Ephraim, Timnat Serach, which was Mount Ephraim, Vivne at a ear, and he built the city Vayeshev Ba, and he lived there, settled there. Excuse me. These are the inheritances that uh, Elazar Cohen and Joshua ben Nun and Rashi Havot, the Mate B'nai Yisrael, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of B'nai Yisrael, Nichalu. What's Nichalu? What's the, uh, what is the conjugation? Nichalu, Jim? That's right. <laughs> No, it's perfect, actually. Uh, I'm thinking the nun. Nun is part of it. No, no, nun is part of it. Nachal. Nachalu is past. It's past they. But but it's nichalu. Nichalu. So which which uh, conjugation? PL. Causative. It's causative. That, that they cause them to inherit. Hefield. Uh, uh, PL. PL. Uh, I guess that just because of the hearing. Right, right. It's a PL. Right. Right. But Shilo caused them to inherit in Shilo. Lifne Hashem before God petach all the way at the opening of the tent of the meeting. Vayechalu and they completed mechalek et haaretz from. Causing to distribute from dividing the land. So now we know the borders of all 12 tribes. And again, the reason we had to know this, 
the rabbis explained to us. I believe it was in the uh, in uh, I forget the name of the book. Okay, just have to take my word for it. I guess I can't remember the book. But the reason we saw that you had it, the rabbis uh, the rabbis give is later on nobody could argue about what their inheritance was. They had to be very clear because again I'm cutting into your borders. We're really car we're gerrymandering. That's what they call it. Ger gerrymandering right into your borders. So if I'm going to take your land, I have to have proof that this was really my land. On the other hand, if I want to grab more land, I want to do a la land grab. I, I can't because this land was given to a person and I have to go further out and conquer different territory, which is what the advice that uh, Yoshua gives to B'nai Menashe. Okay, So we are stopping and we're on chapter 20.